Hi, this is Timothy Brusella. Again, I wanted to discuss uh, implicit differentiation some more. I have some examples here for my Math 1325 students. Maybe it'll help them with their homework. Uh, here we're told we're given the function 4x squared equals 10x minus e to the y. And we're told to find dy dx uh, using implicit differentiation. Well, I'd want to use implicit differentiation. I know that because the equation's not solved for y. That's when you use implicit differentiation. If it's not in the form y equals or f of x equals, use implicit differentiation. So we're going to, the instructions say find. I didn't make a note of what it said. It said find dy dx. I'll just say find y prime. So we're going to differentiate in terms of x. The derivative of 4x squared, we know that that's just an 8x equals. The derivative of 10, that's a 0, so we're, uh, the 10 is gone, minus the derivative of e to the uh, y power. Remember the derivative of e to the uh, x is just e to the x. To differentiate a y, you differentiate it the same way you would if it were an x, except so it's an e to the y, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, and the derivative of that exponent is y prime. Differentiate e to the y the same way you would if it were an e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of that exponent, which is being denoted by y prime. And once you realize that, this one really falls out quickly. We're trying to solve for y prime, so what do we need to do? To undo that multiplication, we'll divide both sides by negative e to the y. I have an aversion to leaving it in this form, so I don't like that negative in the denominator. Positive divided by negative, I now have a, I can put the negative in front of the fraction, that's what I'll do. So I have the negative in front of the fraction, I have an 8x on top and an e to the y on bottom. Hmm, it's sort of hard to see that. Maybe it shows up better on video than it does here on paper, but let me make a note of that. Let me redo that. There's the negative. We have an 8x over an e to the y. Is that better? Is that clear? Oh, now that I look at the projector, both of them are clear. Okay, well, uh, let's do another one. I know y'all love your E's. What about your LN's? Do you like those too? Mm, yeah. So, we have to remember how to differentiate ln x. Remember, we have that little formula. Uh, the derivative with respect to x of ln x is, what's the derivative of ln x? in terms of x. Y'all remember? Yes, 1 over x. So to find y prime, we're looking for y prime here. That's what the instructions say. Let me write that down. Find y prime. We're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of 10 ln x, you just bring down the 10 the way we did when we were differentiating uh, natural logarithmic functions. Multiply it by the derivative of ln x, and the derivative of ln x is just a 1 over x. Equals the derivative of 15, we know what that is, that's a 0, that's an arrow I've drawn there. Minus, now the derivative of ln y. Well, differentiate that as if it were an ln x. It'd be a 1 over the variable y. But then y is representing an unknown uh, function. So, once you differentiate the term containing y, you then multiply by y prime. So this is going to give us 10 times 1 over x is 10 over x equals, we'll have a negative, 1 over y times y prime, I'd write that as a y prime over y. 
Hmm, I'm trying to solve for y prime. I think I would multiply both sides by a, uh, let's see, I recall in the past uh, students had some problems with that negative sign there. Maybe it'd be better if we just uh, transpose the uh, uh, sides. The stuff on the right side we move to the left, the stuff on the left side we move to the right. Maybe I'd like that better. That would give me, that negative's going to become a positive, y prime over y and that's going to become a negative 10 over x. Now I need to get rid of that y in the denominator. We know what to do to get rid of a y in the denominator. Multiply both sides by y to give y prime equals that'll be a negative 10y all divided by x for my final answer. And any questions there? Take a moment and look at that. Make sure you follow what I was doing. Okay. And so far we've been finding uh, y prime. Uh, and that's all we've been looking for. It's just the derivative. You're given a function that's not solved for y, find its derivative. If you think about it, this implicit differentiation is really a powerful uh, differentiation tool. But suppose you wanted to find a derivative, and then you wanted to know, okay, uh, what's the slope of the tangent line at a point on the uh, graph of that curve? Or what's the rate of change? That's what they're looking for here on number, uh, the next example I'm doing. This is number eight for the students that are currently enrolled in my class, but uh, if you're one of my students and you're not, uh, and this is a different semester, say you're watching this next semester, probably this is still very similar to uh, your number eight in your homework. So there's the function. And we want to find the derivative, derivative of y with respect to x at the point zero, one. So we want to know what's the slope of the tangent line to the graph of this function at that ordered pair. I wouldn't want to uh, try to solve this equation for y. Look at that. This is one of those situations where finding the derivative uh, explicitly by solving for y and then differentiating, that would be a nightmare if we had to do that. So we'll differentiate both sides. Once again, there's a difference of terms, another difference of terms, so we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. The derivative of 2x squared, that's just a 4x minus the derivative of 9y to the fourth. 4 times 9, that's 36. y cubed, is there anything else on there? Is there anything else I need when I'm differentiating that minus 9y to the fourth? I brought down the 4, multiplying, subtracted 1. Yes, I need a y prime stuck on there. Remember, when you're differentiating the expression containing y, you have to multiply by y prime. The derivative of 5x is just a 5 minus the derivative of 9y, uh, the derivative of 9 times the variable is 9, but then what else do I need? Yes, I need a y prime. Ah, there's more than one y prime term here. I would get all of the y prime terms on the same side. I think I'd pick up this uh, uh, y prime term on the right, move it over to the left, and that negative is going to become a positive. So I'd have a 9y prime. I still have that minus 36y cubed y prime equals. Oh, I'm sorry about that. The motion sensor in this room doesn't detect that I'm in here since I'm sitting here writing. And as a result, the uh, light switches uh, occasionally switch off. So. Now everything that doesn't have a y prime, we have all the y prime terms on one side. Now let's move, <coughs> excuse me, 
Let's move the terms that don't have a y prime to the other side. So we already have a 5. I'll move that 4x over. That'll become a minus 4x. And why did we get all the y prime terms on the same side? Why did we get all the y prime terms? We can now factor out a y prime. That'll leave me a 9 minus we'd have a 36y cubed and then to solve for y prime to undo that multiplication we'll divide both sides by 9 minus 36y cubed <coughs> so we now have y prime equals On top, we have a 5 minus 4x. And on bottom, I have a 9 minus 36y cubed. And we're not finished. They didn't ask us just to find dy dx. They told us to find the value of that derivative at the ordered pair 0, 1. So, realize x is acting like 0 and y is the, uh, y, y is the uh, number 1 so we're going to have to plug in 0 for x and 1 for y when you do that you'll get mm, please, y prime equals 5 minus 4 times 0 all over 9 minus 36 times 1 cubed. Well, that's going to be what? A 5 over a. That's a 9 minus 36. That's just a negative 27. So, the value of the derivative at the ordered pair, the value of the derivative at the ordered pair 0, 1, is the fraction positive. I don't like that negative in the denominator. So, it's going to be a negative. 5 over 27. Is that negative showing clearly? It's a negative 5 over 27 there. I think that's more legible. That thing there looks just like part of the uh, fraction bar. So to find the value of the derivative at an ordered pair, for a function that's stated implicitly, it's not solved for y, use implicit differentiation to find y prime. And once you find y prime, now in the past if you need to evaluate a derivative, all you had to do was just plug in the x value. But since the derivative now contains x's and y's, you got to plug in both the x and the y value at uh, the order pair. But otherwise, it falls out pretty painlessly. Okay, I'm going to take a break. Bye-bye.